Greetings viewers and welcome to the official YouTube channel of the Xavier Society of Law and Justice, Xlarge. The Xavier Society of Law and Justice of Xavier Law School and St. Xavier's University, Kolkata brings to you ZDAC 22, Xavier Intra Excellus Trial Advocacy Competition 2022 in association with Kolkata's leading law firm, Fox & Mundell. It is Kolkata's first trial advocacy competition to be held in campus on 11th, 12th and 13th of August 2022. In order to help us understand how exactly trial advocacy works, we requested the convener of Trial and Appellate Advocacy Society, Ms. Sandeepa Bhattacharji, who is currently in her final year, to help us record a video for the same and she was kind enough to agree. This video has been uploaded in order to help everyone understand what exactly ZDAC 22 is and how trial advocacy works. Watch the full video to get a clear idea about ZDAC 22 and feel free to check out the label timestamps in the video description below to skip to the desired part. Hello everyone. Uh, at the very first, I'll be starting with my introduction. I am Sandeepa Bhattacharji, a fifth year student from KIIT School of Law and I'm also the convener of the Trial and Appellate Advocacy Society of my college. Uh, along with that, like you people must be thinking that today why I am here, a student like you people, why I am here to deliver a lecture or maybe a orientation on like why uh, like you people should listen to me. It's just because uh, like uh, I have done uh, like nationals previously pertaining to trials, you can say, and moves, you can say. So yeah, that's all with my introduction. So guys, uh, like I'll be starting uh, with explaining at the very first hand, because this will be the first time for you people. So on the very first hand, I'll be starting with explaining what trials is. And for that purpose, I'll be sharing a short PPT, which my college uh, people have usually followed. And so trial, uh, like as I have stated here, it is a judicial examination and determination of facts and legal issues arising between parties to a civil or criminal action by considering the evidence both oral and documentary. So the people usually have a general conception, like most of the students. Trial means criminal trial. No, tri trial doesn't mean always it should be a criminal trial. There are two types of trial. One is civil trial and another is criminal, uh, criminal trial, okay? So uh, there is a very distinct thing and uh, like, uh, like we follow two types of trial. And now you have to, like after reading the proposition that you get, you have to get it on your merit that is it a uh, like criminal trial or it's a civil trial, okay? What are the essentials of trial? Okay, so trial is at first it's a, uh, public proceeding, it's a judicial examination. And here, like we determine facts and various legal issues following the precedents and uh, every other statutes, uh, then necessarily there are two parties. One is the prosecution and another is the defense. Then uh, it can be either a uh, civil uh, trial or a criminal trial, as I have said. And the consideration of the evidence in the trial is both uh, admissible in the form of oral uh, like uh, evidence and documentary evidence. I will gradually come up with what oral documentary evidences are and there are innumerable type of evidences, witnesses, all these things will be further explained to you people, okay? So the first thing that uh, we have is framing of charges by the magistrate. Then we come up with uh, like submission of the uh, like memorandum or documents uh, like I hope you people also have memorial submission so there is memorial submission the first thing you do is the written brief that you are providing pertaining to your case and related to your case uh, also I'll be sharing uh, my memorials that are uh, winning memorials in uh, some nationals so I'll be sharing it with you people so that will be convenient for you people to understand okay so yeah, the first thing that we start uh, the trial uh, in uh, the arguments is first thing is the opening statement that we start off with. Then we address the bench. Then we say what has happened in the case. And there we also give a short brief about the facts. 
so these are the things to be inculcated in the opening statement and we also have to stress upon the fact that all the facts and evidence from the uh, this is from the side of the prosecution i am saying all the facts and the evidence will be proved beyond any reasonable doubt because if there is a reasonable doubt in the mind of the judge then you then and there you lose your case okay so it's always uh, we start with the opening statement that oh, we have things like we introduce uh, the bench we introduce our cases we say what are the charges in the cases then you can add upon your lines that you think is suitable for the cases then we comes uh, then there comes up you can uh, sum up the fact with the opening statement i mean i have uh, like done trials and uh, whatever so far i have always loved my facts with the opening statement so what does what that does is that Uh, like that is very much useful in the way that saves your time because we have a time constraint while we speak in the competition we have time constraint so in that particular scenario you club the facts and saying facts doesn't mean the judges are well aware of the facts so we, uh, saying facts doesn't mean i will blab the entire fact that is been written in the fact sheet facts are undisputed but that doesn't mean you cannot go beyond it and say how you want to portray your case everything depends upon how you are being the advocate and how you are representing your client how much mercy you are expecting from the judge towards your client all these things matter your expression matter the book of you are using that matter the way you address the way you ask for justice that matters so like the opening Uh, like we should make the opening statement really very strong and like uh it should be uh, like actually uh, very much uh, uh what do i say like it should be very much strong like some uh, it should leave some impact on the mind of the judges so the judges is ready to hear you further and they take interest in listening to your case okay this examination of witness so as per section 137 of the indian evidence act examination of witness by the party who calls him shall be called the examination in chief uh every witness is first examine the party who has called him this process is called examination in chief suppose ki i am giving you an example okay in uh, there is a so and so case i am the prosecutor and uh, suppose harsh is the defense counsel okay so in that case and umang is my witness okay so i am the prosecutor and uh, like after the opening statement has been completed i am uh, like i am uh, going to call my first witness that is umang agarwal maybe he is the complainant in the present case okay uh just take an example that this is a murder case and umang is my uh, umang is the main complainant okay umang is my witness that means umang is a prosecution witness so technically i am calling my witness and then i am asking him questions this is called examination in chief and also in examination in chief there are certain things to be asked you cannot ask every question in examination in chief in examination in chief you are supposed to ask questions that can give a brief narrative about the incidents like first question you can ask in examination in chief but these are the technical question that we have uh, like always asked uh, the um, like our witnesses or maybe we have done in a, like i am just delivering you people knowledge out of my perception okay so umang umang ko i am asking ki could you please introduce yourself for the benefit of the court so then umang will introduce that i am so and so i am complainant in the present case and i am doing this particular thing and i am doing that particular thing whether he will uh, explain about his age maybe uh, his um, occupation and all then second possibility of question i can ask umang is umang could you please describe that uh, like how was your relationship with the uh, suppose the deceased 
uh, it's a murder case so uh, like it's uh, suppose ki what, how was your relationship with the deceased uh, then second uh, third question we can ask like every question should be detailed and there should be no leading question leading question comes under section 144 141 of the indian evidence act leading questions can only be asked in cross examination and what are leading questions is this as this sections are very much important like uh, if you people want then you people can jot down the sections okay so uh, yeah leading question is something that gives you hint okay hint of uh, the answer already like uh, if i am saying ki at 10:51 am in the morning where were you okay this seems to be a leading question because this is mentioning directly mentioning the time and this is giving a hint to the witness that yeah yeah like uh, so that he can say so you are not supposed to ask leading questions in the examination of the chief rather you can ask leading question as many as possible in the cross examination to extract the truth okay then not only in respect to time any question that gives you any hint of where you were where i was or where the uh, matlab anything that gives direct indication okay in this case like suppose your uh, like i am the prosecution counsel and i am asking leading questions in examination of chief then harsh being my uh opponent counsel can put a raise an objection to the judge that objection my lord or objection your honor uh my co uh, my opponent counsel is asking leading questions uh is asking leading questions to in examination in chief so you can put a objection like that if uh, any of your co counsel is or opponent counsel is asking leading question in examination of chief okay then in examination of chief we can ask question like can you explain to the court about uh, the details that has happened uh, the details of the court that has happened or uh, uh, sorry details of the incident that has happened to the court okay so these are the few type of question which you can inculcate okay i am not giving you the all the questions or the entire questionnaire because it's something you people it's a exercise it's something you people also should know and, and uh, encourage yourself to learn how to make this uh, descriptive questions okay then we uh, then comes up with the next stage that is the cross examination cross examination is one of the most vital thing in the trial to extract the truth if somebody is good in cross questioning and if somebody has the courage by by cross questioning has the courage to break the witness then you can win your 50% case there because art of cross examination is something that everybody doesn't possess for cross examination i am not saying i am not demotivating any of you but it's very true that art of cross examination is very much important it's that ki how you speak how you raise your tone how much uh, like how much uh, like pressure you can create on the witness to extract the truth because sometimes you will see the witnesses are very much adamant with the uh, they are like ki uh, hum to sach bolenge hi nahi but the whatever our counsel has taught us we will speak only that thing we will go to the court and we will only speak that thing and we will stick to that but there also if you can question him if you can shoot him with innumerable number of short questions then i think that you can extract the truth easily okay so yeah uh, coming to the cross question the provision of the cross question is 137 of uh, indian evidence uh, indian evidence act uh, okay section 137 of the indian evidence act okay so the examination of witness by the adverse party shall be called his cross examination in law cross examination is the interrogation of a witness called by one's opponent the purpose of cross examination is simply not to attack an adversary but to strengthen your own case okay suppose like i am the prosecution counsel as i have said and harsh is the defense counsel okay so now uh, harsh has the uh, harsh 
can cross question Umang because I, I am already done with uh, examination of chief. Now the opinion council comes and he does the cross examination. Okay. So in that scenario, I'm only saying what are the probable cross question that Harsh can ask to Umang. Okay. Uh, my way of asking cross question is little aggressive. Uh, it would have actually been more fruitful if there was an actual witness and I could have cross-examined and I could have showed you that how the process really works because that's really very interesting. But uh, due to some constraint, uh, like uh, as we are unable to do that. Okay. So I'm just telling you how you people can shoot your question. Okay. The first thing you can go is like always keep a smile on your face because if you are showing yourself confident enough, then the opponent person at some point he is like he is very desperate to think that like that person next to me is very confident about extracting truth from me so at that given point of time and through your attitude through how you adverse that gives a lot of impact on the witness so in that case suppose uh, i will be cross uh, examining uh, umang so i am taking permission from the bench that uh, your honor counsel seeks permission to proceed with the cross examination of umang agarwal uh, then uh, the judge say permission granted then we proceed okay so mr umang how have you been you can ask him the question this type of questions okay unnecessary little unnecessary question you will get an objection. Maybe that can be overruled or sustained. Some questions, if there is an objection, then you can say to the judge that your lot, uh, your honor, my question is very much related to the case. And I know I can extract truth from this. So kindly let me uh, question uh, the witness. Okay. So that gives, uh, uh, so the judge gives you permission, then the opinion counsel cannot object. So these are the way you can uh, like uh, like you can stop the interference of the opponent counsel to ask cross question to Umang. Yeah, so I can ask Umang that how did you come to the court today? Then what is your monthly income? Then uh, like uh, as for you, you said that at ten fifty eight uh, a.m. you were there in Xavier uh, Xavier's un University. Is it not the fact that you are lying with the fact that you were there in Xavier's university and also uh, like if if you are cross questioning somebody make sure that person answers in yes or no like before you start just say Mr. Umang you will either answer in yes or no I don't want a detailed uh, description just answer in yes or no so that makes the like contention very narrow okay and from there you can draw your conclusion Okay, suppose Umang say, uh, I was asking, uh, I'm, I'm shooting questions continuously. Okay, and at that point of time, Umang said something. Yes, I was there in the Xavier's University. But as for the fact, uh, Umang wasn't there in the Xavier's University. At that point, what if you immediately, when you get a point in favor of yours, or the witness says something which is in favor of you, in yes or no, or in something, then, then and there, at that moment, you say, point to be noted, my lord. Uh, as uh, for the facts uh, given, Mr. Umang said that he was, uh, uh, Mr. Umang said that he was not in the Xavier's University at 10.51 a.m. But right now, while cross-examining, Mr. Umang himself committed that he was present at the, uh, the Xavier's University at 10.51 a.m. So that simply... Uh, uh, reconciles that Mr. Umang is lying and his testimony is not a reliable piece of evidence in the court. Okay, that's how you can bar it. Okay, sometimes uh, it's not actually, it's beyond the rule, but then sometimes you can also badger the witness. Okay, you will get an objection badgering the witness. It means continuously asking the question, demoralizing him, giving putting him under a lot of pressure. Okay. So you can do that too, but then you will get an objection from the opponent counsel that uh, the person is badgering my witness. Okay, so yeah, uh, but we often do that. We often badger others' witness 
so that we can extract the truth. Uh, we also sometimes get objection from the judge himself that you are badgering the witness or you are being too much aggressive with the witness. Don't be too much aggressive. Don't be too much sweet as well while you are cross questioning. Uh, like be little aggressive, be confident enough, have a smile on your face so that it doesn't seem like that you are badgering the person. Like smile and ask the question and all. So it puts a lot of impact. Okay, closing statement. How and uh, in which way you describe the closing statement. Closing statement basically inculcates what you have found in your uh, like examination, cross examination, examination in chief, and from the contention of both the parties and what they have argued. Okay, for instance, you can prepare your opening uh, opening statement and you can go to the court and you can speak. And you can you can make yourself prepared for the opening statement from beforehanded, and you can be very vigilant. Uh, like um, the, you go and speak about it, okay? But then closing statement doesn't have the uh, same thing. For closing statement, you have to be very much particular and very much attentive throughout the trial. What your opponent is saying, what nooks is there. In, uh, while your opponent is speaking and what are the lags, what are the lags that they have possessed throughout the, uh, the trial procedure and everything, you have to find out all those. Then what you have got out from the cr uh, cross-examination, you will find out all those and then you will club all these details and you have to be very quick making your close exam uh, closing uh, statement. Uh, like uh, when they are speaking, you should be in, uh, emancipating it in your head that what all you going to speak in front of the judge in uh, closing statement. Okay. So in closing statement, uh, like uh, you say about the uh, Lord while cross-examining, this, 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 this details came up and this, this, this has happened. There was lack in investigation. You can say there was lack uh, in the work that has been done by the police then there is no chain of circumstances that has occurred then there is but that depends upon the case to case okay chain of circumstances that has happened then uh, like how it is how it has not been proved beyond reasonable doubt or how it has been proved beyond reasonable doubt if you people are stretching upon circumstantial evidence then how circumstantial evidence is admissible in the court of law everything you have to be very specific and you have to uh, uh, like deliver yourself to the judge okay first of the opening statement of the prosecution then is the opening statement of the defense. Then is uh, then uh, prosecution calls its witness for examination in chief. Then defense come and cross examine uh, its uh, witness. Then defense call its witness for uh, examination in chief. And prosecution goes and cross examine uh, defense witness. After the chief examination and uh, cross examination is done, then uh, like uh, prosecution gives its closing statement and defense gives its closing statement uh, along with the prayers and then uh, like they rest the case. Okay. okay, okay. So two speakers and one researcher. Now you have to segregate it among yourself that how you want to div uh, divide it. Like the speaker one can do the opening statement and cross-examination or maybe like you people can divide it among yourself. Like suppose ki I'm, uh, I'm the speaker one, I'm uh, doing the uh, opening statement and cross-examination and chief examination, we both have divided among each other. The, uh, uh, like uh, I will do half chief examination, uh, you will do half chief examination. Then uh, suppose ki do witness ka chief examination, I will do witness ka chief examination, you will do for counsel. Okay? Do witness ka cross examination, I will do one witness ka cross examination. Tum kar lena. Aise karke we can divide it among yourself. Uh, and also, what we can do is like who uh, the first uh, speaker, suppose I am the first speaker, I am giving uh, the uh, opening statement. I can entirely give the chief examination. If somebody is not confident with the chief examination in cross, because uh, cross examination is very technical and very uh, like uh, like it leaves a lot of impact. So in that case, 
you have to be very vigilant while you choose your team also your teammates you need to know the weakness and strength of your team so in that case you should be very particular about the fact who is doing the cross examination okay or if you both want to do the cross examination you can divide it among yourself but uh, like cross examination should be some done by somebody who has the guts courage to speak uh, like a little vibrantly so yeah that composition you can divide among yourself that totally depends upon you these are the steps that you have to follow okay before the round start half an hour before we uh, the parties get the witness okay and it is very much necessary for all the team members just because my researcher who mujhe kuch nahi pata hoga my speaker who to mujhe ye sab ki zarurat nahi hai don't do that matlab don't be very lethargic about it rather it should be on team effort like all three of you should equally know what you people have written in your memorial how you are going to brief your witness and how you are going to present the case in the court because in case of any emergency arises suppose ki the first speaker is sick or the first speaker is unable to come in time or anything in that case researcher has to back up the team okay it's just not that my researcher who mai hath khada karke baith gaya bas mai research kar liya mera portion khatam nahi keep yourself ready for all the emergencies because that is very much necessary and it is equally necessary that all the people should know about the facts of the uh, like facts and what has happened in the case and how you people has research upon that is very very much necessary like once you start doing it you people will definitely get to know the nos okay then you people can like if you people are having two to three witness segregate among it among somebody make them sit and make them understand about what the case is actually about then you uh, the three of you can divide three witnesses among yourself and then you can ask the witness ek ek karke ek ek ko samjhao ki tumhara role ye hone wala hai tum court mein jaake ye ye cheeze bolne wale ho aur in case agar tumko opponent counsel of course tumko grill karega tumse truth extract karne ki koshish karega in that case tum log kaise smartly answer karoge it's not a always ki witness get break witness gets hostile or witness get any other thing that is not true sometimes witnesses are so good that even we face a lot of problem in breaking the witness or being like the uh, like what matlab how they are made up of they have answer to every question that we are asking they are very sharp uh, and it is for the witnesses please be very patient while the uh, while you are uh, having the cross examination because examination in chief mein to tumko pata hi hai kya bolna hai kyunki tumhara team already tumko पाठ पढ़ा के लाने वाला है कि तुमको क्या बोलना है तो यू नो वट कि आपको एग्जामिनेशन इन चीफ में क्या बोलना है तो यू डोंट बी वारी अबाउट डोंट वारी अबाउट एग्जामिनेशन चीफ बट फॉर एग्जामिनेशन क्रॉस एग्जामिनेशन बी वेरी विजिलेंट बी वेरी काम लिसन टू द क्वेश्चन दैट योर ओपोनेंट काउंसिल इज आस्किंग आंसर इट विद डिग्निटी आंसर इट विद सॉफिस्टिकेटनेस आंसर इट विद पोलाइटनेस दिन सी neither they can they will have the potential to break you nor uh, you, you going to lose the case uh, for uh, the for your uh, like team okay and also it is very much necessary ki whatever your team says you do that because uh, we have faced this problem ki at the end moment the witnesses doesn't listen to the team they run away they do this they do that but don't do all these things because like it is boosting up your confidence as well as it is boosting up others confidence as uh, like it is boosting up your team's confidence as well because whatever you are going to the court and you are speaking that can either make their case or break their case so it is very important that you play a great role okay i am telling you about uh, like uh, my witness like uh, we went for the amity trials uh, amity noida trials there uh, like we were allowed to take two witnesses uh, from our team only so the team composition was of four okay two speakers and two wit two witnesses so my uh, like uh, we were two advocates who was about we don't had researcher it was like he, we can give a club effort uh, we don't had a researcher we could have chosen our witnesses and in that trial 
we matlab our college back the best witness award because i am telling you matlab i wish he i could have shown you people how good my witness was and how extremely well he performed okay he performed well because he wanted to perform well he knew the facts in details he knew about the case he has the idea he if opponent counsel is asking me he has the smartness in himself to answer the question that we haven't said he go and answer it this way he has answered it in this way and he has backed the position okay so it is absolutely uh, i will say his credit of course but then it also depends on the team how you groom your witness okay grooming is very much necessary the way we have groomed our witness these are the points where you can lag don't break in this point these are the things that you have to follow these are the things that you have to say okay either that can either make the case or break the case so that's the condition okay the first thing is that read the facts of the case until and unless like you have the tendency of vomiting मैंने इस चीज को इतनी बार पढ़ लिया है कि अब इससे मेरे को एक छोटा क्वेश्चन भी कोई पूछे या छोटा चीज भी मेरे को कोई पूछे देन आई एम नॉट लैगिंग बिहाइंड आई कैन आंसर दैट थरोली द जजेस आस्क यू क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम द फैक्ट्स एंड समटाइम्स द पीपल आर अनएबल टू आंसर फ्रॉम द फैक्ट्स एंड यू शुड बी वेरी पर्टिकुलर विद द फैक्ट्स ऑफ द केस एंड यू शुड नो ईच एंड एवरी डिटेल ऑफ द फैक्ट्स ऑफ द केस सो गो रीड इट एन नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स यू वॉन्ट just keep on reading it unless and until you crack the problem read it crack it in your own way of course from your own side you people have to represent both the sides on two particular days uh, if i am not wrong then two particular days you have to represent both the sides so for representing both the sides just think about how you can defend your client and always never think something which is Spoon feed it to you. Always think out of the box. Never take the straight road. Rather, I would say take the curved road because the curved road has a lot of obstacles. But if you crack it, then definitely the satisfaction you get is, but the it's unmatchable. So in, that is the thing. You always think out of the box. If you can see everything is crystal clear, clear. ये case तो murder का है. मेरे client ने murder किया है. मेरे client के against सारा proof है. I cannot prove him innocent. That's wrong. It's your job and duty to prove your client innocent out of innumerous number of evidence, innumerous number of things. Because the facts are usually undisputable. But trial competition is all about how impact how. Uh, like uh, how much drama you can create spice it up we all have done it in our trials like uh, just don't think ki matlab like spice it up with some facts unknown facts like don't bring facts from ki matlab matlab kuch bhi ulta seedha facts mat leke aao isi ke sath relevant iske sath kuch banao make it jaise ki i am giving you one example uh in my case uh, like uh, that uh, nationals we have done is like there uh, there was a case and uh, like it was a murder and the husband was charged for the murder but then we thought how to defend the husband because like uh, there are certain uh, possible things which shows that uh, the uh, the chain of circumstances you can say the timings the framing everything shows that the husband has committed the crime but in that case what we have done from the side of the defense is they had a child okay we asked the child to say things in favor of his father and there was a eye witness like uh, with whom we have proven that the eye witness uh, didn't used to like that uh, particular uh, man Uh, who is the accused that didn't used to like that particular man so he has said uh, like he has uh, said uh, spill bins about him falls about him and we have made the child speak in favor of her father okay then uh, like the court said us ki child witness can be manipulated and child witness uh, like uh, can easily be manipulated and the child stay with their uh, with her parents and all then uh, how can you say that the child's testimony is a reliable piece of evidence 
in that scenario what we have said is the father uh, and the uh, grandfather grandmother uh, the father's family of that part, uh, particular child was in jail the child the child with her uh, was with her maternal grandparents so there is no chance of manipulating whatever the child is saying it she is saying it on her own because there is no chance of manipulation because she was already saying with her uh, maternal grandparents who have filed a case and she is speaking against them so where from where the chance of manipulation comes because uh, the father was in jail how can the father manipulate uh, from the jail then and there at that point the judges were impressed and we won it like these are the points that you have to catch on your own be very sharp be very technical go uh, you know uh, like uh, what to say go and abide by the law but do not uh, be very much that uh, ye aisa hai to aise hi karna padega isse thoda sa bahar ya isse thoda sa ye nahi kar sakte thoda thoda you can do okay will have to be very much advanced with the indian evidence act crpc and the uh, provisions uh, whichever provisions uh, like you uh, is involved in the particular case uh, i don't know the case uh, like that you people are having so i can't say which provisions to follow up but crpc if there is any statutes of uh, sorry provisions of ipc and then if uh, like indian evidence act not if indian evidence act and crpc is mandatory make it in your fingertips there are uh, n number of uh, important section inquest report uh, then uh, fir uh, framing of charges uh, all this section this should be in your fingertips then the sections uh, from um, uh, like um, yeah indian evidence who can testify then uh, burden of proof and then uh, there is uh, like cross examination chief examination re examination of witness types of witness which type of witnesses you are calling to the court everything read it acche se keep it in your mind because the judges can ask you question in any given point of time from these things and you people are expected to answer that burden of proof burden of proof always lies with the prosecution unless and until it's the case of general exception like in certain cases of rape and other things the burden of proof lies with the accused but in uh, like most of the case the burden of proof always like if you are uh, if you have are the complainant then the burden of proof lies with you to prove the case beyond any reasonable doubt theek hai these are the important terms that you have to keep in mind because these are very technical uh, you should keep in mind okay in moot uh, what we often write uh, in the memorial or other thing honorable court do not write honorable court it's always a learned session court okay it should be ld not h o n b l e it's not honorable it's learned okay always use learned court and always address the bench as your honor not uh, my uh, lady shape lord shape not this your honor is the general thing that we uh, like call in trial uh, we refer in trial to the judges okay but circumstantial evidence okay most of the like cases or trial propositions that we have is like from the side of the prosecution it's always on the circumstantial evidence there is no direct evidence it's just to te test your deliberateness or te test your capability okay so circumstantial evidence is one uh, more um, most important thing from the side of the prosecution that you can rely upon if there is no direct evidence or if there is direct evidence uh, which are uh, not that much reliable in that case you can uh, bring the circumstantial evidence but then you have to make a chain of circumstances if there is a circumstantial evidence then there should be a chain of circumstances like this happened from this that happened and from that the murder happened and everything but it should be in a synchronized way and there should be a chain of events that even that has occurred then you have from the side of the prosecution you have to prove the mens rea actus reas very important you have to prove these things then 
from the side of the defense the sabse bada hathiyar is lag in investigation okay same from this agar defense bol raha hai lag in investigation prosecution ko ye bolna chahiye ki lack of investigation cannot be the mere reason for the uh, acquittal of the accused theek hai just because investigation acche se nahi hua hai iska matlab ye nahi hai ki the, uh, we can let off uh, let go of the accused there are many other factors that uh, that uh, directly points that the accused has committed the crime theek hai uh from the side of the defense as i said lack of investigation is one major point stress on the point that agar investigation hi pura nahi hua hai then how can you accuse my client uh, to be guilty of the offense because it hasn't been done properly and there is um, like a no clear evidence or direct evidence against my client first thing second things come up uh, with this uh, my client didn't had any actus reus or mens rea is totally vague there cannot be any chain of circumstances prosecution has not proved the case beyond reasonable doubt prosecution has not done their homework properly and then uh, it comes uh, then you can also you can create a suspicion of third party because the burden of proof lies with the prosecution the prosecution ke upar ye aata hai ki prove karna accused guilty hai और प्रोसिक्यूशन अगर ये प्रूव भी नहीं कर पा रहा देन यू पीपल ब्रिंग अ सस्पिशन ऑफ थर्ड पार्टी कि व्हाई माय क्लाइंट सम अदर पर्सन सम थर्ड पार्टी कुड हैव आल्सो कमिटेड द क्राइम ठीक है देयर आर लाइक यू कैन ब्रिंग कि मतलब मान लो एक लेडी का डेथ हो गया और uh, उसके हस्बैंड के ऊपर लाइक देयर इज अ डायरेक्ट चार्ज यू कैन से मे बी उसके किसी पुराने आशिक ने कुछ कर दिया हो या uh, किसी ने आउट ऑफ रेज कुछ कर दिया हो there is no call records and anything to prove that um, uh, like uh, my client was there at the present scenario and all so these are the basic things and then we come with the jurisdiction okay it will be original jurisdiction unless and until it's an appeal and the appeal is always in the higher courts so there in the session court there is no chance of appeal so it won't be in appellate jurisdiction it will be in original jurisdiction under section 177 of crpc read with section 209 of crpc okay so the name of the case is very important how you like uh, the complainant versus the accused okay if there is more than one accused then the uh, name of the prime accused and others and if there is only two accused then the name of the prime accused and another you be very particular with these things then you have to write a state of which versus what and if there is no state mention then directly just state versus this particular name okay then uh, you will be uh, like uh, like uh, what are the charges that has been used in the present case so you have to use those and after that comes the table of contents uh this is uh, like how you can create a table of content and these are uh, the page numbers that you have to follow by list of abbreviations abbreviations you have used throughout your memory or you use it so then these are the cases the cases that you have referred in your memorial all these cases you have to add okay one more important thing guys do not add any such cases which you don't know about it is very much important to know about the cases that uh, yeah of course uh, you have must uh, possess knowledge about the cases that you are writing in the memorial because sometimes the judges though written brief is not that much important or memorial is not that much important but still sometimes judges ask you this case so you have mentioned do you know the facts of the case or which judge bench or from which court decision it is so it is very 10 case provide karo but wo 10 case aapko pata hona chahiye ठीक है इट्स नॉट नेसेसरी ऑलवेज कि 50 केस ही प्रोवाइड करना है बट 10 केस भी अगर आप अपने मेमोरियल में साइड कर रहे हो इट इज वेरी मच नेसेसरी दैट यू नो अबाउट योर केस नो नीड ऑफ कंपेंडियम लाइक जरूरत नहीं पड़ता इफ द जजेस आस्क इन इमरजेंसी जस्ट टाइप इट एंड शो इट हिम दिस इज दिस इज दिस पैराग्राफ इट इज एंड दिस हैज बीन साइटेड और क्वोटेड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर पैराग्राफ दैट यूजुअली डोंट आस्क देन व्हाट आर द बुक्स दैट यू हैव रेफर्ड what are the statute statutes that you have referred and the lexicons like manupatra scc west law hain law then uh, lexis nexis anything that you have used just all this then comes the jurisdiction as i said 
section 177 read with section 209 of the <coughs> crpc then comes the facts agar uh, jaise ki maine bola ki agar maan lo aapka do page ka fact hai usko summarize karke usko ek page mein dalo ek se der page aur fact should not be more than two pages theek hai uh, फैक्ट्स अगर दस पेज का हो उसको डेढ़ से दो पेज में लाने की कोशिश करो नॉट मोर देन दैट डू नॉट गो बियॉन्ड दैट बिकॉज इट्स गेट लेंदी एंड इट्स जस्ट कंज्यूम योर पेजेस नथिंग एल्स देन कम्स द स्टेटमेंट ऑफ चार्जेस ओके दिस आर द लाइक चार्जेस दैट द अक्यूज हैज बीन चार्ज अंडर एंड देन कम्स द इश्यूज ओके समटाइम्स व्हाट हैपन इज दैट इन सम ट्रायल्स यू गेट द इश्यूज but in some trials uh, you don't get the issues okay in that case how to how you can frame your own issues always frame the issues pertaining to the charges will ishan aluwalia like i have written be held guilty for the murder of ishika aluwalia it was on section 300 so i have framed the charge uh, on the same uh, section so you gonna frame the charge as per the sections that's it for the uh, i sorry frame the issues as per the the uh, charge that has been framed okay particularly like uh, yeah, this uh, like actually this was provided to us by the organizing committee so we have to abide by that okay from the side of the prosecution if you don't uh, matlab if the uh, university is not providing you with the issues you can just uh, make issues as per the uh, no what to say uh, as per the charges okay and from the side of the defense what you can one extra issue you can add is that in the light of the crime scene is there any element of suspicion of a third party and that you have to justify ki uh, maybe as a maybe just throw possibilities throw doubt on the mind of the judge iota of doubt on the mind of the judge ki ho sakta hai iska kisi ne kisi aur ne murder kar diya ho ho sakta hai ki iske kisi purane friend ne kar diya ho ho sakta hai iske kisi business colleague ne murder kar diya ho burden of proof is not on us to prove it's on the prosecution so these are the various possibilities that you can use okay you can use this issue from the side of the defense but don't use it uh, from the side of the prosecution then it it will be difficult for you people to justify that what why you have added this issue then comes the memorial is as similar as uh, the moot memorial okay and then comes the summary of argument like all the argument that you have used just summary of it and after that comes the advanced argument advanced argument mein you have to write matlab make sub points okay uh, the uh, like main issue under that sub issue divided into sub issue then it is easier for the judges to read and understand the same way it is easier for you to give, uh, divide or uh, segregate your cases and keep it in mind uh, like um, uh, chain wise ki up access years burden of proof mens rea like that you can like uh, have it okay after that comes the prayer okay so this is the prayer uh, like matlab um, what you expect from the court uh, from the side of the prosecution uh, like you will expect to convict the uh, 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 yeah, uh, to convict the people and from the side of the defense you will demand for acquittal so that's it and then at the end it is not mandatory but you can provide a list of witnesses so it it's easier for the opponent party to understand which uh, witnesses you have taken in your side and which witnesses they can bring from their side okay so this is the way you can uh, put the list of witnesses we thank ms bhattacharji from the bottom of our hearts it's been a matter of absolute pleasure to have received this detailed orientation from her with regard to trial advocacy i hope all our viewers have learned a lot about how trial proceedings work in trial advocacy and now they have a clear idea of how trial advocacy will work in zeta 22 we thank her for her priceless contribution to ZTAC 22 and lastly we would like to thank the convener of Xlash Dr Animesh Das for his constant support and guidance in all endeavors of Xlash